Okay, so the motion is carried by 30 votes to 24. Questions to the Cabinet member will now be taken. Cabinet members, plural. Question number one, Councillor Ambash. Question number 12 to the Cabinet member, please. Thank you, Councillor Ambash, for your question. Um, if you feel the safety and the well-being is absolutely paramount for the children in Wandsworth, then the answer about value for money is absolutely yes. Um, as you know, um, the result of the Ofsted inspection shows that we are now out of intervention and we're making great strides in improving um, our services for the children and in, at, set out in the, in the answer are the many areas which are getting much, much better. Um, but of course, we're not alone in having um, more children who are vulnerable, more children who are, have got special needs, more children who need to be looked after. That's the same problem across the country and we need to tackle that and make sure they're safe. So it does me mean we need to invest money to keep our head above water with that. So there will be a further um, 10 million pounds invested in our base budget, also seven, an extra seven million pounds just for this year. Um, but on top of that, of course, we've got to make as many efficiencies as we can without imposing on the safety and um, um, well-being of our children. And as Councillor Ambash knows, we've got various um, irons in the fire on that. We're, we're, and one of the big ones is trying to increase the number of permanent staff as opposed to agency staff. Agency staff are very expensive, but we are making um, good strides there and we've started to recruit. We've got seven new permanent managers. Managers are the important people. I think if you have the permanent managers, then it's much better for the staff who work for them and encourages them to be more permanent. Um, and we put in a lot of sensible plans like a lot more investment in, in early help, something which I was very surprised when the opposition voted against that at our, our scrutiny committee. Um, and we've got um, more plans to reduce the use of expensive placements outside the borough, um, to work with early help to try and um, stem that flow of children who need help coming in to be looked after. So um, I would like to turn around and put, pose the question to Councillor Ambash, where does he think we should, should not spend any money? Where should he feel there are cuts in the services to reduce that spending? He really, I mean, I really feel the opposition can't have their cake and eat it on all these issues. Supplementary question, Mr. Uh, Mayor. Councillor Ambash. I would love to answer Councillor McDermott, but I know the Mayor wouldn't let me give a speech, but I would be prepared to meet with you any time to dis discuss suggestions I have in relation to using the 54 million. I've got two areas, though, particularly I'd like you to focus on, and the question is... So are is, you asking... Do you uh, agree with uh, me? Can I ask the if question? she'll meet you, is that the question? No, no. <laughs> I'm s I said, Mr. Yeah, Mayor, I would come up with suggestions, but you um, won't allow I'm me to do I'm not picking on that. you, but we've got a lot, lot of business, and that is a question. Yes. Is that no, sufficient? No, that's good? not the question. I'm going to... What is your question? The supplementary question is, do you agree with me that there are some decisions that don't represent good value for money? So there are two areas. One is the top five children in children's home placements, a third of a million each. That's 1.8 million a year just for five placements within the right, 7 okay. million out What's of our budget. What's the question, budget. please, the Councillor Ambash? The quest, second quest area is, are we getting good value for money okay. paying 0.4 of a million for right, agency Councillor, fees um, to employ McDermott. agency staff. Do you agree with me that these don't represent good value Sit for money? Sit down, please, Councillor Ambash. Um, th thank you, Councillor Ambash. <coughs> in fact, the second part of your question, I answered in the first part <laughs> about agency staff and permanent staff, so I've answered that one. As a, You're not uh, getting the figures down. I, I have answered the second part of your question already when I... You weren't listening. Yes, um, I was. In the, in the first part of your supplementary, you ask about the expense of um, children being placed out of borough in very expensive residential homes or secure placements. Of course that's too much money and that is one of the areas we are really trying to work with through, for example, our early health strategy, which you're not helping us by not supporting us. If we have a very really good early health strategy, nip these problems in the bud, we don't, we don't um, then make sh have these problems, these children going on and causing more issues and, and having more of a um, disruptive life. So. Um, 
Of course, that's right that those are expensive and we need to cut back on them. Second supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Crivelli. Uh, the Cabinet member will be aware that Wandsworth has introduced a number of uh, efficiency initiatives that have produced cost savings of £2.5 million pounds, uh, a year in children's services. Does the Cabinet member agree that these budget efficiencies are an achievement, bearing in mind the increase in demand for services, including a 40% rise in special educational needs statements for children since 2015-16? Yes, thank, thank you, Councillor Gravelli. Yes, um, it, it's, it is a hard task because at the same time that we're, we are making true efficiencies in, in, in staffing, in management costs, in keeping children um, in, in the borough, at the same time we've got this um, opposite um, stress of more children coming into, into the system and um, some, ex as Councillor Ambash has actually mentioned, some very expensive children that we do have to look after. But I think in all, all the answers to all these questions, the bottom line is the safety and security of our children. That is the bottom line. All right. Um, question uh, 13, Councillor Morgan. Uh, question 13 to the Cabinet member. I thank the no. Councillor for his no. question. The whole point of these schemes is to improve not just the physical environment, but also the life chances of the people who live there. So it's not just about brand new council homes, although clearly that is so important for the families who will be moving into those new properties. It will solve overcrowding issues, and people are rightly excited about having new homes. But it's also about achieving aspirations and getting rid of inequalities. That's why we also have public health programmes, and mentoring schemes by WorkMatch, with a real focus on getting people into jobs. We all agreed on this approach, and we are standing by our pledges to these communities and delivering the changes that we promised. I really hope that the ward councillors for these two wards will think seriously about supporting the regeneration, and particularly these aspects. We all promised this to those residents, so I'd say please remember those promises and support this work. Supplementary, Supplementary Mr. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Um, now that we have a more detailed view on what these developments will look like and the facilities they will offer, can the Cabinet Member comment on whether she thinks we're on track to deliver the plans we said we, said we deliver against this? Thank you. Councillor Caddy. Well, I thank the Councillor for his question. And the answer is yes, we are on track. And we are already starting to see real benefits to residents in both schemes. On the Winstanley York Road, local people have already got jobs through WorkMatch on the Grant Road sites. WorkMatch will be opening a dedicated skills and employment centre on, Falc on Falcon Road in the spring. In April, the first six tenants from Penethorne will move to brand new houses in Roditch Lane. The planning application has been submitted and subject to consent. Block one, which includes our 50 million pound leisure centre, and Block 5, which contains 71 decant units, social housing, and 65 shared ownership units will be under construction by this time next year. On the Alton, the works to the base youth facility are due to complete in May. The public health team continue to work with local stakeholders, and the planning application is due to be considered in the autumn, with work starting at the end of the year, subject to planning. We will deliver new homes and new neighbourhoods for our residents, keeping our promises. Second, second supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Gilbert. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, to the Cabinet member, my understanding was that this question was actually about youth services, so if I may, I'd like to bring it back to that. Um, with the tragic knife crime incidents, it's a really sensitive time for youth services. And in July, sorry, in 2015, it's my understanding that the Council decided to reduce youth service budgets by 1.4 million pounds. In early 2016, uh, the council um, terminated the contract in Roehampton with Spurgeons for the Alton Activity Centre. And the cabinet member will know we've had a number of back and forths about the underuse of that site, which I think can't be denied. Would the cabinet, be, cabinet member be prepared to reinstate the youth services to the Alton Activity Centre and more generally to provide after school holiday and weekend services back to the 2015 funded levels? 
Um, I thank the councillor for her supplementary. Um, I'm not the cabinet member for children's services, um, but certainly I can talk about youth services in Roehampton, and that's exactly what I, I did talk about in my answer. We're going to be opening the new base facility. We're going to be investing in that area. That's one of the key things that we know is really important to these regenerations, is making sure that we have service, services for young people, and that's why we're investing in the new services that we are. Um, so I, I totally agree with, I totally agree with the, the councillor. It is an important area, and it's really key to the regeneration. Um, and, and youth services in Roehampton will be going from strength to strength. Question 14, Councillor Anderson. Question 14 to the Cabinet Member. Thank you, Councillor Anderson. Um, a lot of the details actually in the written answer, but I, I do think that the whole start of, the whole start of your question is on, on the wrong premise. There are no cuts to stay in play. It's an unfortunate Labour campaign that unjustly has really upset a lot of families and, and children in, in Wandsworth because they, they started a campaign which has no premise. There are no cuts to stay in play. Your side and our si side entirely agree that stay in play is absolutely essential to um, young people starting off in life, to parents who need to have support, to, um, to find friends, to do things together. And we are keeping stay in play. And, um, the, well, we're keeping stay in play and across the whole board and um, the next stage is to actually work with all the very good, good um, information we've collected from experts, from parents, from um, everybody who uses Children's Centre to go forward and, and um, populate our children's offers so that there's a, an offer across the whole borough which matches what people want and um, is, is good value and also um, improves on the offer that we've got. Um, so there are no, I mean, one point I might make is that the term stay in play, I think we've all got very confused about the term stay in play because it's actually called different names at different um, children's centres. And I think one of the good things as we move forward when we talk about the reorganisation of the children's centres and potentially one idea is to have one sort of central management of children's centres is that there's a, a, a sort of curriculum that goes across the borough. So uh, members of the public, families can look on the website and say, where is something called stay and play across the borough? Which place will I go to? Shall I go to York Gardens or shall I go to Hillbrook, etc.? At the moment, stay and play is called all sorts of things. I've got a list here of what they're called. Come and play, messy play, make and play, babies and crawlers, bring a book to life, music and movement, rhythm and rhyme, get moving. So I think that's one thing we will certainly work on as we move forward to sort out what stay and play means. Supplementary. Thank you. I think the parents who came to the committee were very clear what they mean. It's naught to fives, it's universal, it offers a variety of different play activities and it can't be rebranded as different things and then still called stay and play. There's something very specific that is valued by the parents, thank you for mentioning that, but I don't know if it's yet valued um, by the council. There is lack of capacity at Hillbrook, that's why the parents of, of those at Franciscan want it to stay open. Saying that the same things can be provided in libraries is wrong. That's not stay and play. That's a session in a library. It's not the same. There are safeguarding issues, amongst many others, if you try and provide it in a library. Would you agree that there are cuts, actually? Because in Newlands Hall, for example, and Phelan's, stay and play has recently been cut. It's, it's a clear fact. There used to be stay and play. Now there isn't. That's a cut. When I had Councilor children Anderson. going to stay and play, there were Councilor five Anderson. sessions a week at my local Councilor centre, and this had loaned four. So would you agree Anderson. that actually Newlands and Phelan's Anderson. has been cut? And would Councilor you look Anderson. into a review of the impact Councilor of the closures Anderson. of stay and play? Councillor Anderson. <laughs> Councillor McDermott. Compared with the current services and the new proposed services, there are no cuts. Stay and play. And we all agree that stay and play is absolutely important. And I'm, I will absolutely promise that stay and play will be continuing um, it's a children's center offer it, we, i don't think we should be hide bound by having stay and play at particular geographical p places Ch a children's center offer children's center offer with the professional people moving around the moving around the borough can offer stay and play at a library at a children's center at um, a village hall they could even have a lovely stay and play in our in our wonderful parks and a playground let's work, move forward and work with work with parents and families to find out what's best and what they all want second supplementary mr mayor 
Second supplementary, Second, please, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Birchall. Um, can I ask the Cabinet member, as well as the free play and stay and play sessions run at our children's centre, would the Cabinet member agree with me that another valuable learning opportunity for our young children is offered by the librarians at our 12 children's libraries? Yes, that... Councillor Birchall, what a very good question, and that, that is absolutely right. A lot of parents really value going to the library where they have rhyme time, they have professional li children's librarians working with them. That is a wonderful resource that we have in, in the borough, and that can be combined with all the other support we can have with our children's centre offer, which includes various um, guises of stay and play. So we will definitely be working with um, Councillor Sutters on, and... Um, um, on with libraries to give that support. Question 15, Councillor Crivelli. Number 15 to the Cabinet member, please. Thank you, C Councillor Crivelli. I think, I think um, the main thing to say about this, about autism, and it, it's um, sort of hitting us, it's hitting everybody across, across the country, really, is, is that we used to have one in a hundred children who, who were... Um, designated the autistic, it's now moved dramatically to one in 50. So we've got a, um, a big job on our hands to, to look after these children. So this, re this review of the autistic um, offer, it comes at a very timely time. And um, we've had a very good um, consultation with a whole range of professionals from the health service, from the mental health service, from the clinic, clinical commissioning group, as well as a, a huge range of parents who are actually involved with children with autism, um, their own children using the service. I think the, the big move forward is to make sure it's during school term time. During, um, at the moment, it's only school term time. We've got to make sure it's a, um, a, across the whole year because pa um, parents need that support in holiday times as well. And um, also the fact that at the moment, parents with autistic children find that they, have, they might have support during the assessment time but a lot of them want the support much earlier during um, the sort of pre-assessment when um, things can be nipped in the bud <coughs> and also post-diagnostic time when um, they really need a bit more support then. So there's a good, a good reason to look at the whole um, offer and make sure it's fit for purpose um, and also using a different mix of professionals, um, which a lot of the parents put forward was a really good idea to have an assessment coordinator role, to have an educational psych psychologist, a wide, wider mix of staff to support all, all the needs. Um, and this is just the start of a very thorough consultation going forward, which will be reported to the June OSC. And I really hope as many parents give their views, because we really want it to be a, a, um, a system that matches the needs of the parents and children. Uh, can I thank the uh, Can I can I thank the cabinet member for her uh, answer. Uh, does the member agree that for parents, the wait for diagnosis in relation to autistic spectrum disorder uh, for their child can be very frustrating? And the perception is you don't get support till you get diagnosis. Yes, thank, thank you, Councillor Crivelli. Actually, that came out very, very clearly in the, um, the, the, the um, interaction we've had with parents to date. Um, in fact, I think there's a lot more we can do with helping parents at the early stages when they, they're not, their children aren't acting the same way as other children at a certain age. They, um, they, want, they want to ask questions. They want some support. It may be that at that early stage, the child isn't actually autistic but can be given help in some other way. So if we can work with that um, family at an early stage, that might well nip things in the bud and they may well not need to go on to the next stage. So I think it's in really, really important that that pre-assessment stage I is given a lot more emphasis to give, and it, it matches with our early help um, project as well. Second supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Fraser. Thank you. Um, I just wanted to make a quick observation first. I, don't, I think when we're talking about those with auti autism spectrum disorder and special needs, I don't think you can quite say that we can nip those problems in the bud. 
Um, also, I'd just like to add, I think whilst, um, you know, the, the consultation um, it is happening, I think it would be good if it could be held more jointly with, with partners such as St George's Hospital. Would the Cabinet member consider that happening? And also, um, we had quite a few parents come to the OSC to talk to us about um, their children who, as you noted, might suffer from other special needs. Um, could you perhaps incorporate um, taking on board more consideration for this in, as part of the consultation? Uh, thank you, Councillor Fraser. Um, the, the last part of your question about um, other, I mean, this particular um, consultation is about autism, so this will be about it. We don't want to muddy the water by bringing, bringing in other areas, but of course special needs, will, we're reviewing the special needs offer all the time, and there will be specific areas which we will have particular consultations on, but at the moment this is on the autistic spectrum disorder. Um, your comment about nipping things in the bud, uh, some parents have no, I mean, I, I'm not an expert on autism, but some parents wouldn't know that their child had autism or not, but it may not be anywhere near autism. That means that those parents can give them some help. It may be some support in some other way. So in a way, it is nipping it in the bud because it means they've been diagnosed with not having autism at a very early stage um, and can be helped to, to, to go forward there. Question... Question 16, Councillor Stock. Question 16 for the Cabinet Member. I thank the Councillor for her question. And, and she's uh, got Councillor Mrs. Sutter. Sorry. <laughs> That's me. It, it's for the benefit of the um, recording. Okay, sorry. I'll start again. Um, I thank the Councillor for her question, and the answer is as written. She's got a very full answer, though, that sets out how we actually deal with our waste. We, we've been in uh, working with WIWA since 2012, and whilst many other authorities struggle with multiple streams and trying to get their recycling up, we have settled on a model that recycles dry goods, including plastics, some plastics, and sends all our general waste to Belvedere, where it is, as written, helping to power 100,000 homes. And if you then recalibrate the figures, is to put in um, all the things that come out of that, the metals, the ashes, and the aggregates, you actually get a recycling rate of, of 42%. Of course, that is not how most of London does it, so we never actually get the, um, the uh, accolade, really, for, for, for doing that, but it is actually true. I'm also particularly proud of the fact that we do not send anything to landfill, and we're able to use all the residual particulate to manufacture goods for the um, construction industry. So. We have set out the figures for you on what it, it would save if you, um, I think it's on the second page, what we would save if we um, took you up on that. But th th these are very rough figures because we don't really know. Supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Stock. Uh, as the Cabinet Member uh, will know, uh, her current recycling rate is a pitiful 22.3% just 0.1% higher uh, than the rate that the council uh, achieved last year. Uh, as the cabinet member notes in her answer, if the council were to raise uh, rates to 35%, we could in fact make savings of roughly the same amount as the council, ta council tax rise that's proposed this evening. So given those savings that could be made if we increased cycling rates, what are the cabinet members' the question, plans Council to maximise Stock. those savings to keep council tax low? No, actually, I don't actually agree with that. Um, I don't think we could, we could do it quite as easily as the answer is written here. All the, all the costs are not factored into it. I think the model we have at the moment is extremely efficient. I, I accept that our recycling is not as high as it should be and that we should keep working to get it, uh, get it up, but the amount of contamination we have from our, uh, our high-rise blocks is, is difficult to deal with. I know that we've recently come forward with some new initiatives that the Housing Department are looking at, and I think that Councillor Caddy is looking at, that may be able to get something, um, a way that, that improves those figures over time, but it isn't gonna happen. We also cannot disrupt the uh, contract that we have in play, which goes to 2024. Second supplementary, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Pluck. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Before the incinerator at Belvedere was brought into action at the turn of the century, the then Labour opposition uh, lead said she was in favour of energy from waste, but against incinerators. 